Thank you, uh, Dr. Horowitz, for your very kind introduction. And thank you, everyone, uh, for your very kind welcome and encouragement. And Dr. Jane Kudar, I distinguish the ministers, distinguish the leaders, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Last month, I flew over miles and miles of devastated forest and peatland in central Kalimantan in Indonesia. I was traveling with uh, Dr. Kuntoro, Minister Kuntoro. Thank you very much for your hospitality and guidance. I met with uh, many affected communities. I saw the impact of uh, deforestation and forest degradation uh, firsthand. Uh, central Kalimantan's rich biological and cultural diversity uh, makes it a fitting choice as Indonesia's a pilot province for the Red Plus uh, program. I have established the United Nations, even though it's a small United Nations office in Kalimantan for the Red Plus program. The Red Plus program is helping to create a financial value for the carbon stored in the fo in forests. It is giving added incentives to governments and local communities to preserve and sustainably manage them throughout the tropics. I thank the avoided deforestation partners for organizing this event. And I thank Dr. Jane Kudal, as always, for her continued efforts uh, to advance this important uh, debate. Uh, Dr. Kudal is our messenger of peace of the United Nations. And she has done tremendous work over the years to advance our understanding of the deep interconnectedness of humans and nature. Last year in Cancun, countries agreed to take the Red Cross agenda forward. It was a collective pledge to slow, halt, and reverse deforestation. This was an important recognition of the win-win that forests represent for mitigating climate change and benefiting people, ecosystems, and biodiversity. And here in Durban, parties have agreed on a way forward on the important issues of safeguards and reference levels. I am encouraged, encouraged to see that the forest countries are acting to reduce the deforestation and that donor countries are pledging to support these activities. Yet, forests continue to disappear at an alarming rate. We must do more, and with a greater sense of urgency. I would point to three areas for action. The first, we need to make the Cancun Agreement operational, including those on Red Plus. And we need to go beyond by making progress on all the outstanding political issues, including the future of the Kyoto Protocol. We must maintain momentum towards a fair and comprehensive agreement for mitigation. And second, we must also see a greater results in our search for finance. The scale of finance and technological resources needed uh, for a shift to low-carbon, climate-resilient economies is enormous. This is true for all sectors, from energy to land use to forests, which are essential uh, to the low-carbon transition. Developed countries have committed to mobilizing $100 billion a year by 2020 to assist developing countries for mitigation and adaptation. This is a significant amount, this is a challenge, but the leaders like Prime Minister Stoltenberg of Norway and Prime Minister Menes of Ethiopia, while they worked as co-chair of this high-level advisory group on climate change financing, in their report they said this $100 billion per annum by 2020 would be a significant challenge, but this is a tool. This is a feasible, and member states are working on that. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let us now have a cup decision on financing for Red Plus District. Let us also work to catalyze the trillions of dollars mobilized by the private sector and global capital market. Let us explore innovative ways of harnessing these resources to our shared objective of avoiding dangerous climate change. Third, we need to support a climate-friendly forest sector. A virtuous alliance between business, government, and local communities to trigger innovative policy approaches and actions that can slow and halt deforestation. A private sector partnership is essential for implementing the Red Cross agenda and buttressing the efforts of Congo Basin countries, Indonesia and Mekong countries, and countries in the Amazon Basin. <coughs> Partnerships where local communities and smallholder farmers combine with the power and creativity of the private sector for sustainable solutions. Solutions that respect the rights of indigenous people and empower women, farmers, and local communities. Solutions that will reduce poverty and help communities to adapt to climate change. Solutions that will help us to meet our future food security needs without destroying the forests that provide clean water, subsistence, and income. Solutions that can help us to move forward towards a new development paradigm that values forests and focus pathways for green growth. Through Red Plus, such solutions can be scaled up over time, over time and create transformed deforestation-free market. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our planet, planet's lands and oceans are already stretched uh, to meet the demands of 7 billion people. The human population continues to grow. The search for sustainable solutions is an economic and moral imperative if we are to create the future we want. Red Plus can play an important role in realizing that future. Uh, together, we can realize Wangari Matai's vision to reverse deforestation and land degradation. I'm very pleased to know that her daughter is now carrying her torch, her legacy, and I wish her continued good success. Together, ladies and gentlemen, we change the face of our planet for the better world, for our future. Thank you very much.